Hello everyone, I am Steadfast, and we have got some extremely exciting news for you. This is, I mean, this is just fantastic. There's no way around it. This is great news. You know, everyone's been talking about how dead StarCraft is. Uh, but unfortunately, those people are going to have to face the writing on the wall that it is very much alive. Because we've got ourselves a balanced update test mod so what that means is that these are all test considerations this doesn't mean that everything you see in this video is going to be you know guaranteed to make it into the final version of the patch but it is stuff that is being considered and stuff that they're trying to address so you can see the patch goals it's uh i mean this is this is great stuff right here already i'm gonna zoom in a little bit more Patch goals. Make Protoss more stable on a professional level in the early game versus Raven pushes and more able to fight Terran in mid game, mid to late game armies without solely relying on disruptors. Excellent. Both of these things are necessary because right now that like seven minute timing push is really strong against Protoss. It is super difficult to deal with. And of course the uh, ability of ghosts in the late game Knocking out so many shields of Protoss armies makes it really difficult for Protoss to deal with that. Uh, and then increase the variety in the mid-game and late-game army compositions by reducing the strength of mass ghosts, banelings, and disruptors. Excellent. Banelings really cost efficient are really supply efficient. Ghosts, extremely cost efficient, difficult to break. And disruptors, just generally frustrating units. Make over-specialized units, cyclones, mothership, and festers viable throughout more stages of the game. Great. I like these goals so far. Bring more visual clarity to important units on the minimap, as well as relevant abilities like Widowmine targeting and Disruptor's cooldown indicator. Thank God. Thank you so, so much. This one is so important. The only thing I'll say is maybe make mines more visible on creep. Add that to the list, but that's kind of a different thing. And then that's like, okay, is creep too strong if you do that? But these are very good ideas. Promote more interaction in late game scenarios by making units such as Tempest, Mothership, and Broodlord more maneuverable. Yeah, literally all of these things I'm on board with. Everything that's being presented, especially, I really think this... So, so obviously just getting new stuff is good. Redesign keeps the game fresh. It's good. Obviously Dota 2 does it. They do it amazingly well. Ice Frog is probably the best developer in history. So it's nice to see that we're having the balance council being able to roll this out. I know it's been in the works for a long time, but it's nice to see it. Disruptor cooldown indicator, very important. Widowmine targeting, very important. Both very difficult to see. With that, let's dive right into it. Okay, so this is actually maybe the biggest change of everything in terms of just how much is being adjusted. This is nuts. The Cyclone is being slashed in terms of its cost. From 150-100, which is an expensive unit, to 12550 already way cheaper so it's going to be easier to mass and you no longer need a tech lab we're now going to be able to see reactor cyclone builds i will be surprised if we don't see a double factory reactor cyclone build almost immediately being uh fabricated around this but obviously this comes with some caveats health Reduced from 120 to 100. That's already a huge reduction in health. Armor being reduced from 1 to 0. That's going to be necessary. Supply cost reduced from 3 to 2. That's obviously a big buff. The auto attack range increased from 5 to 6. That's pretty interesting. And it seems weird. But now, the auto attack damage is significantly... It's now 11 plus 2 versus armored. That is, that is going to be relevant in a little bit. 0.491 cooldown. I'm actually not sure what that compares to with the current Cyclone's abilities. But it is definitely different. 11 plus 2 armored. So that means it's... You might you might notice this. Plus 2 versus armored. Uh, oh, no. That's actually not relevant. But that will apply to armor or to attack upgrades, which is what brings us to the next one. Lock-on now uses Cyclone auto attack damage. Plus 1 damage per weapon upgrade. No longer ignores armor. So that is very interesting. One, armored... Uh, well, lock-on is now no longer 20 damage per shot. Or 30 with magfield. Also, I think they're... Yeah, they're removing magfield. Okay. 
Uh, this is actually probably the worst one to start on because it's like the most confusing if you don't really know the ins and outs of the Cyclone. Uh, Lock-on no longer has delay before first shot. That's actually good. That's, that's more of a bug fix for me than anything. Lock-on cooldown removed. This is very interesting because now the Cyclone, I wonder if you can just consistently, constantly always be locked on. Like, if you're really active with Cyclones, until Infestors hit the field, can you do anything? That's that's what has me a little bit concerned about this particular change. Uh, this is good. Lock-on cast range being reduced from 7 to 6. This is actually going to make it a lot easier for Protoss players to uh, use Stargate units. Also, the fact that the damage has now been reduced. Uh, Vikings obviously got a buff recently with the damage point change. And the Lock-on max range reduced from 15 to 9. That is a big one. So now you're not just going to be able to lock on with a Cyclone, scan and run half a page away and still be able to hit. That's good. That is a little bit corny. This is really interesting. I didn't see this one at first glance. Move speed reduced from 4.73 to 3.6. So in the early game, they kind of suck now. Huh. 3.6 is slower than a lot of units. That is actually really slow, but there's going to be a speed boost, boof, speed boost to them that will bring them up to 5.1 move speed. That is a gigantic move jump from 3.6 to 5.1. So I didn't see this one at first. I, I, I actually take it back. I don't think we're going to see reactor cyclone attacks being an issue. I. Uh, huh. Wow. That is really interesting. So they're going to be a lot more... They're going to scale a lot harder, I guess. This is really interesting. Really, really interesting. I wonder how the DPS lock uh, matches up. This is something that I'm... It's too many big changes at once. To know if this is good for the unit, bad for the unit. If it's going to be dominant in every matchup or completely irrelevant in every matchup just because there's so many changes to the cyclone it is completely redesigned from the ground up so maybe we'll come back to this one later i'll see that is, this is a drastically different unit uh you're no longer going to be able to use it with pushes i think against protoss we don't see those as much anymore the like 111 tvp pushes it's also going to be weaker in tvt def Defensively, this is oh you know what this is a buff to banshees yeah banshees are going to be a lot more viable i think now in tvt oh that's kind of cool i think banshees were too strong before but i th i think it's good to have banshees have a more stable uh setup ghost this is big snipe damage reduced from 170 to 130 plus 40 versus psionic I think this is literally just so that they can't kill ultras as quickly. Yeah, yeah, this this makes them kill ultras more slowly. Because Psionic... Uh, yeah, they're still going to be able to kill Vipers in one shot. Will they, will they kill Broodlords in the same number of shots? Yes. But Transfuse will be more effective against them. Like, I think if you... Tra Wait, what is a Broodlord's HP? I think a Broodlord's HP is 220, unless I'm mistaken. I gotta look that up. Uh, Broodlord is... 225 HP. So before it would survive a snipe with... Uh, so this is actually really interesting. Because now if you don't pair your snipes against Broodlords as Terran, assuming this goes through as... It is. I, I got to do the math real quick. Okay, so it's 225 HP minus 130. That brings you down to... Ninety-five? Ninety-five. Uh, so now you're going to be able to transfuse the Broodlord in between the snipes. And the 50 HP you get back from the Broodlord will bring it back up to 145 HP 
So if you get a cheeky single transfuse between the two snipes, it will survive, whereas before it would have taken two transfuses to survive. Actually, two transfuses would that have even been enough because 170 damage knocks it down to 55 HP. Two transfuses would have not been enough. It would have taken three. Now just, instead of needing three transfuses to make a Broodlord get uh, three-shotted, it will now be one transfuse. So you're actually going to be able to do something about it. Which I do think is good because Broodlords right now don't actually do that well against Terran late game armies on the ground and they, they obviously only shoot against ground. Thors obviously destroy them, even cost for cost. But against ghosts, ghosts are meant to kind of, they're meant to soft counter each other, sort of. Obviously, Broodlords are really good against siege tanks. That's where they shine. But they should still be able to hold their own against ghosts. So I actually think this is good. EMP radius reduced from 1.75 to 1.5. So this is, this is a huge change, obviously. Uh, Snipe will no longer one-shot su units such as Elves and Roaches. Yeah, I guess that's true, too. Uh, yeah, I guess that's... Actually, that's kind of good, yeah. One-shotting Roaches is weird. It always felt like Roaches weren't supposed to be countered by Ghosts, but they... I, I mean, it's still not that big of a deal. It's just nice that, like, Zealots and Roaches won't die anymore. Uh, but yeah, EMP. So this is a remnant of Enhanced Shockwaves. The EMP Radius Buff. So, initially, EMP had 1.5 radius, and then a buff that increased it to 2. And then they were like, no, that's too strong in the late game. So they removed it and instantly gave Ghosts natural 1.75, which was really strong as soon as they popped out. Now, three Ghost timings are not going to be as powerful for Terran. That's it. Full, full send, or full, uh, full stop. And now in the late game, they're just not going to be able to drain an entire armies uh shields extremely fast i think emp was too strong against protoss in the late game so i think that's a good thing but obviously if you you know nerf ghosts a fair bit you got to be mindful that you don't leave protoss too strong in the late game uh drilling claws now makes it so widow mines unburrow twice as fast i think that's a good thing i think that's a generally good thing it rewards you being quick about unburrowing your mines uh, this feels like it's a direct buff to Clem and Bion and really fast, amazing micro players. Targeting line is now more visible. Yes, for the love of God, yes. Make it so that you can see what the unit is hitting. That is so good. I love it so much. I actually can't state. This This is my favorite change so far, and it's, it's not close. And it probably will still be my favorite change. The only other one that might be just as close is the other just visual uh, readability change, which is going to be the one we'll come up to when the Disruptor comes up. Uh, Medivac, speed upgrade, replaced with Caduceus Reactor. Increases energy regen rate by 100%. Costs 100 to 100, 53 and a 0.57 seconds. I like that a lot. I think that's extremely good. Uh, this was an upgrade that... Uh, the speed upgrade, what is it? High capacity fuel tanks? Literally never was gotten. No one ever got this. It was a meme. It was silly. No one ever got it. Even though it was actually a really good upgrade. It was just that... that mostly because um, it increased the base speed of medevacs by a bunch. But it was, I think it was fusion core locked. So it was just like, you're never going to get this. But now, now it's really worth it. You're going to be able to uh, heal up your bio armies much more easily in the late game. Uh, maybe six medevacs in TVP can maintain an entire army instead of needing like 10 or 12. Minimap radius increased from 0.75 to 1. Good. Yeah, medevacs are... It's tough to spot things on the minimap. There's already so much to do. I like that it's a little bit easier. Uh, it's... If you're paying attention to the mini-map, you shouldn't be guessing if you're seeing something. So I, I'm, I'm good with this. Uh, also, this is interesting. I didn't know this one. Previously, medevacs could appear smaller on the mini-map on large maps. Did not know that. Good that they're addressing that. This one for the Raven is huge. This is a gigantic nerf to Terran. Gigantic nerf to mid-game pushes. 
and is going to pretty much completely fix the problem of Protoss having difficult times defending in the mid game against Raven based pushes. You know, that six, well, really the seven minute timing is what we're thinking of. Plus one weapons, stim, combat shields, couple of medevacs, bunch of Marines, few Marauders, and a Raven. Interference Matrix has to be researched. Is that too much? It's a really inexpensive upgrade. This is funny because this is actually in a weird way a, a buff to Cloaked Banshees. Because now as Protoss, when you see that tech lab researching, you're not gonna you're not gonna know if it's cloak or interference matrix. It's still it's still gonna be very cheap, easy to get. But, you know, maybe a, a four gate blink stalker play gets in and is able to snipe this. Uh, yeah. It's it's still gonna be actually no, this what am I saying? You're, you're still gonna get this upgrade. 57.14. How long does it take to build a Raven? Uh, does this commit you? Hmm. It commits you to less time with the tech lab. Yeah, so you're probably always going to get double Raven now. We're, we've already seen a lot of players getting double Raven. But I think now you'll have to get double Raven. Wait, hang on. Raven Legacy of the Void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's 34 seconds to build. Interesting. Uh, of course, the Raven cost was already substantially lower. Buffed before, and, and that's why we've seen some double Raven plays. But, you know, maybe this means that Terran has, like, one less Marine or one less Marauder with a push because they can't afford everything. Not perfectly. It's, uh... Yeah, this, this will still make it easier for Protoss to defend mid-game pushes. Um, it's also going to mean that if you build a Raven blindly against Phoenix, Phoenix Colossus. Hmm. Well, it's going to be a decision point. Yeah, because if let's say let's say you go Phoenix uh, charge lot. And the Terran commits to this upgrade, even though it's really cheap. Ah, uh, will that make a difference? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. This is a a smaller change than it looks like at first glance. But it could be a really big uh, change. This is good. This is very good. Adaptive Talons, move speed, bonus removed. So this is a very slight nerf to Lurkers. Uh, and I think it's good. Because the Ghost, for example, is not going to be cleaning up Lurkers as easily. Lurkers have 200 HP. So they'll still get two-shotted by Snipes, even if you get the Transfuse down between the shots. Yeah, because it's still going to do 130 damage, which will bring the Lurker down to 70 HP. Uh, the Transfuse will initially heal 50 HP, plus the heal over time, but the heal over time doesn't take effect right away, which means that you'll be back up to 120 HP, and there's still time for a snipe. A second snipe. But double transfuse will mean that you survive. Uh, so that's that's unrelated to this upgrade. So they've they've nerfed the upgrade, so they're reducing the cost by 50-50. It's a it's a pretty late upgrade, anyways. You get it at hive tech. So it's in terms of cost, it's it's not like a massive difference, anyways. Uh, but I think this is good. It's gonna make just repositioning lurkers less devastating and more able to be reacted to in the late game, which is really good. Siege Lurkers are so strong. Adaptive Talons is already one of those upgrades where you're like, is this too strong? Maybe. Infester. This is a big one. This is a huge change in many ways. Pathogen Glands upgrade removed. You start with it now. Infester starting energy increased from 50 to 75. They've they've automated it with Kaidaran Amulet. Now, no change to the cost, no change to the build time, but this is a pretty huge nerf to fungal growth in general, and this is a bit of a nerf to Dark, to what Dark has been doing. So, 
fungal growth, it'll still lock down your opponent. It'll still be good and it'll be, okay, I don't have infestors, but I have an infestation, or I don't have a path and glands, but I have an infestation pit. I need to lock down some units right now. I can get them out and they're ready to go. Uh, also, it'll make EMP a little bit less devastating on packs of infestors. But cast range reduced from 10 to 9. So just the range is reduced. This is big, though. Fungal growth damage reduced from 30 to 20. This does a lot of things in terms of interactions. Uh, now, when you... Now, obviously, they, they mention it. Since the Infested Terran ability was removed, the Infestor has no utility until reaching 75 energy. True. So they're literally paperweights. 100 minerals, 150 gas paperweights until they get up to 75 energy. This is good. This is good that they're making them viable right away. Uh, but with the cast range being reduced, obviously, like they say, uh, it is going to be more difficult to... Well, I mean, the cast range is not a big deal for what they're talking about, but it's going to be more difficult to fungal growth ghosts. Fungal growth anything. Anything is just going to be a little bit more difficult to fungal. Uh, and it's that's a that's good way of explaining it. It's a compensatory nerf. This, though, 30 to 20. Yeah, you no longer two-shot Marines with Fungals. And when you pair this with the potential uh, upgrade to the Medivac Healing... Actually, no, it's not Medivac Healing. It's Medivac Energy Regeneration. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Either way. Uh, we're going to be seeing Marines not dying to double Fungals. This is something Dark's been doing a lot of recently. Just builds two Infestors and just fungles down a double drop and just kills it. Kills like, you know, 12, 13, 14 of the Marines very quickly. Now, you'll need three fungals if you want to do that. That's two more supply. That's an extra 100 minerals, 150 gas. And I think because of how this works, if you maybe A-move the medevacs consistently, they will keep changing targets to the low HP Marines and they will heal them up. And I think... I think you may be able to micro it in such a way that you would only lose like four or five marines, even if all three fungals land. I wonder if they'll increase the DPS. There's no indication of that. But it would be interesting if they reduce the duration. In a weird way, that would actually be a, a nerf because then it would lock down the units for shorter amounts of time. But that would also make it so that it's not as much of a commitment. Also, another interesting interaction is that this no longer one-shots a medevac when you... Fungal Growth Parasitic Bomb combo. It used to be that that would exactly kill it. 30 damage plus 120 equals 150, which is the Metavax HP. So it's another little way that the Fungal Growth is uh, just slightly nerfed. And also, I mean, that's a, a very small but somewhat impactful nerf in late game ZVP as well. We'll see how this one shakes up. Uh, but obviously being able to lock down units as soon as units pop out is really nice. Uh, Spire... Air armor upgrade cost reduced from 150, 225, 300 to 100, 100, 175, 70, 175, 250, 250. This is a, this is a pretty nice buff for Zerg. Uh, in order to get plus three air armor, now the total cost is reduced by what? 150, 150? That's pretty big. They were really expensive upgrades. 300, 300 for a plus three carapace. Flyer carapace is pretty big. Um, I'm not really sure why they're doing this one, but yeah, I'm not really sure why they're doing this one. In ZBZ, it was always better to get Carapace first in Muta vs. Muta, but we... Now it's much better, because now it's the same cost as air upgrades. Also, it might be worthwhile to... I wonder if this will actually cause you to... Go mutas more. Cyclones will no longer hard counter mutas anymore if they go through as their current change. So maybe rushing Carapace versus Mech will be a little bit more effective again? I'm not sure. Huh. Uh, this is... Well, I mean, okay, yeah. Consume damage reduced from 200 to 150. Uh... Reduces the attention required for gathering Viper energy. Fair. All right. I mean, Vipers are already really strong, but it's not like you can nerf them reasonably 
to the point that Serral's not going to be able to use Vipers effectively. So this is just kind of a quality of life for everyone who's not Serral. Uh, maybe Serral Dark Rainer? This is a big change. I like. I, I, it's. I don't think it's too big of a deal. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think it's a big deal because it, it's not going to change the amount of time it takes. It's just you're less likely to to like kill your own buildings. Yeah, I I, I think it's fine. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think so. Uh, this is a huge change, huge change. So they already addressed this in the top. Move speed increased from 2.24 to 2.62. They already buffed the move speed of the Broodlord and nerfed the Broodlings themselves. But now they're buffing the speed even more and nerfing the Broodlings even more. So the Broodling move speed getting dropped significantly, as well as the health. So they're going to be a lot easier to clear. Actually, are there any, are there any like big damage points about this? I don't think so. Uh, the move speed buff is significant, but I think it's a pretty good compens compensatory buff or compensatory nerf on the actual strength of the Broodling. It is good to be able to move the Broodlord around much more effectively. This will make it a lot better at filling a more niche role. So, for example, sniping High Templar with Broodlords will be easier now. Uh, or moving them out of range of snipes will be a little bit easier now. Especially when you combine it with the fact that the snipe is going to be nerfed against Broodlords. Broodlords will be... They will feel better. I think. But in a straight-up fight, they're going to be easier to deal with. So I, I think it it's pretty good in general. Uh, I like this little note. Make this not affect Broodlings from building death. That's That seems important. Uh, Overlord. Deceleration speed increased from 1.49 to 2.28. Thank you. Good. Generate creep delay reduced from 1.43 to 1.07. Uh, sounds good. Yeah. Allow for more active usage of queen drops. That is pretty nice. That is... I don't think queen drop pushes were too strong. But this just makes units more maneuverable. And, and this will actually make it so maybe pick up and drop micro for overlords is actually possible now. Or at least a little bit more uh, viable. Also, transport. Move speed increased on the base transport by just a tiny bit. It's not substantial, but it's enough. It's enough that it'll incentivize play. So if you like ferry eightlings into a main base, it's just going to be a little bit faster to do so. As well, move speed with Noobtai's Carapace increased from 2.68 to 2.83. Buffing Zerg drops is a very good thing. Things that buff being active, being uh, aggressive, that'll make more exciting plays, this is good. I, I think, and it's a pretty small upgrade, differential, like, these are not massive value changes. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, this is kind of funny. Cost reduced by 25 minerals. All right, cool. I, I guess, like, sure. And burrow unburrow time reduced from 1.43 to uh, 0.89. This is someone who's a fan of Dark. He watched Dark do unburrowed burrow unburrow uh, ultra harass just recently, and he was like, "Yeah, I want that." Uh, I mean, it's can you can you now burrow to dodge snipes? What's the channeling time on snipe actually? Uh, ghost steady targeting. I don't think they've changed it. 1.43 seconds. You can now dodge snipes with Burrow. Neat. Uh, Ghost absolutely crap on ultras, so making it so that you can maybe deal with them. Because, I mean, the Terran can still scan. If you see the... It's not like the Burrowed Ultra is going to... It's not like the Burrowed Ultra is going to take, be so quick that you can't respond. Like, you can still scan and still channel the snipe. But at least now it'll require a scan. That's, I think that's good. Ultras obviously don't get used very much at the high level, and they're trying to change that. Uh, this is a pretty huge buff. This is a 
this is a pretty gigantic buff. Speed and range upgrades combined on the Hydralisk. They've recombined them back together. Strength of Hydra base timings will be honored versus Protoss during this testing period. Somewhere Mio Micah just... He started smiling since then, since he read this, and he hasn't stopped. Uh, this was a thing before. It is really strong. This one might be too much. This one might be too much. We'll see. Uh, it is good, of course, that they're keeping an eye on this. I wonder if increasing the cost, because it used to be 150, 150 before. I wonder if increasing the cost and the duration would be okay for this. I do think that Hydra's being pretty much useless until uh, both upgrades are done really sucks. It just really sucks. But this is obviously a bit of a compensatory buff for what is coming here. I see a lot of people saying, oh, Zerg only getting buffed. This is terrible. Well, I already read the patch notes a little bit. This is pretty big. Actually, this is huge. I didn't look at the fourth part. This is massive. Bonus damage per upgrade reduced from two plus two versus light to two versus all. Now, you might not realize what that means, but what it means is that you no longer two sh or one shot probes and drones with plus two attack. Plus two melee banes are now no longer going to be able to one shot probe lines. And that is good because there is a lot of times that a single baneling gets into a mineral line and it wrecks everything. Now you're going to need plus three melee to be able to do that. And I think. I think even that will be countered by just... Because it's it's 35 attack per shot, right? And you get plus 4. It does 43 damage versus probes. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure... Wait, 16 damage plus 2. 19 plus 2. Yeah, it was 35 before. 37, 39. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so even with... Uh, plus three melee. Banelings will no longer one-shot probes if they have even two armor. Any, any combination of two armor, one armor, one shields, or two shield upgrades. This is huge. This is a massive nerf to Banelings. This is a gigantic nerf to Banelings and a huge buff to... Uh, a huge buff to mid-game and ground Protoss, and just Protoss in general. Also, centrifugal hooks. You might be saying, oh my god, they're buffing centrifugal hooks. It's only 100, 100 from 150, 150. They're reducing the time by 8 seconds. Well, they're also taking away the plus 5 HP you get from Baneling's uh, speed. Which is also a pretty big deal. So, Banelings are a lot weaker now. Banelings are going to be a lot weaker now. And they're also... Uh, does this change anything other than one-shotting uh, probes and drones? I don't think so. I think this still will... wreck everything else. Um, How do they do against Hydras now? With plus two, they would have two-shotted Hydras. Now they'll three-shot them. That doesn't matter at all. Uh, what else? I mean, they'll be less effective against Marines, but they'll still two-shot them. It just means they'll heal up a little bit faster. Some fights that would have barely gone in favor of Zerg will now barely go in favor of a Terran. Uh, but of course, obviously, the, the HP bonus is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a huge nerf to Banelings. Uh, Forge. Shield upgrade cost. Level 1 is the same. Level 2 and level 3 are being reduced by 25-25 and 50-50. Okay, sounds good. Shield upgrades are really expensive. Same kind of concept as the Spire. Not as much of a buff, but still a pretty big one. But of course, the shield upgrade affects everything Protoss has. It affects ground and air. And it affects buildings. So... Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool.
Uh, cybernetic score. Air armor cost reduced from 150, 150, 225, 225, 300, 300 to 100, 100, 100, 100 70, 175, 175, 250, 250. So they're doing the same thing they did with uh, Zerg air upgrades. Sounds good to me. I'm not, this is not contentious at all. War Prism minimap radius increased from 0.875 to 1. Good. Same thing they're doing to the War Prism or to the Medivac. This is a good thing. This will make it slightly easier to spot on the minimap. This is not a bad thing at all. Uh, Disruptor. This is a pretty big change. This is a pretty big change and will be a little bit... This one might be a little bit contentious, but it also features the absolute best change. Wait. Uh, supply... Co oh, oh, no, no. Oh, never mind. Never mind. It's not actually that good. I thought they were changing the actual visible appearance. Okay, this is a little bit of a confusing change. Supply cost increased from 3 to 4. That's obviously not confusing. Model scale reduced by 9%. So, it's going to look smaller, which means it's going to be more visually distinctive. They're not going to stack up on top of each other. Radius increased from 0.5 to 0.625. That is... They're just making the disruptor bigger, so it won't clump up as much. So it's going to be easier to look at it and tell which ones are have not fired yet. It's still going to be really difficult to tell because it's not that visually distinct. I really wish there was a way to make it more visually distinct. Although I, I do know that with certain settings, you can kind of make it a little bit more so. Um, This is good. This is generally good, in my opinion. It's still going to be able to move through the same way the Archon does. We might have some funny stuff happen where the actual unit movement could get a little buggy because that has happened with the Archons. Like, Archons now can bunny hop under specific situations. Like, if they get squeezed into a corner, they'll hop around sometimes, uh, which is not ideal. The supply nerf is really... Yeah... This is, this is just a nerf to Disruptors. I think, right? Uh, they are buffing Protoss in late game PVT in other ways. Model scale reduced by 9%. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Disruptors have always been a huge feast or famine unit. I, I don't know. I don't know. It will make um, getting an emergency disruptor out uh, against like a Terran push where you're like, oh, I'm building Colossus. And then they're like, haha, I'm doing a tank push off a of 111 with no stim. It's hitting earlier than you were expecting. You're like, oh no, I need to build a disruptor. Now you might just be less likely to have that free supply. Uh, but I mean, that's... It does make them, of course, less massable in the late game, which is generally a good thing. Because when you get up to like 8, 10, 12 Disruptors and you're just constantly firing out Novas, that's a little silly. That's a little silly. Uh, this one. Okay. So at first, I didn't understand this change. And I still don't think I like it. I don't think I like it. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, I, I want to make it clear that this is absolutely something that should be changed. So, someone discovered recently that Void Rays have a strange bug where they are... Uh, when they get Flux Veins and they activate Prismatic Alignment, it actually reduces their speed to below the normal Prismatic Alignment speed. It was a weird rounding error but it was a 0.2 speed loss. So this brings it back down to 2.8 uh, to 2.62 when it should have been 2.82 if it brings it down to its lowest speed. But instead they're thinking, no, we should actually buff flux veins to the point where now it's actually going to be uh, a general speed nerf relative to the flux veins upgrade itself, which I'm gonna be honest with. I think this is a horrible change. Because speed void rays were a massive problem 
in terms of destroying the enjoyment of the game for a lot of players. And I am a little bit worried that we might see that again with this big buff to their speed when the uh, prismatic alignment is used. I do like the idea of what they're talking about. Actively uh, allow players to actively micro void raise in late game engagements without needing to cancel prismatic alignment. I think that's a cool concept. So for example, if you get parasitic bombed, you can, uh, you can split more easily. I think that's good. I think that's good. But is that what's is that what's going to happen? I'm not sure. Also, it is going to be now more difficult for Zergs to kind of uh, dart in, try and bait out prismatic alignment, and then dart out. Because now, with the the big speed buff once Flux Veins is up, it's going to take a, a fair bit longer to get away from those prismatically aligned Void Rays. And that's going to lead to maybe four more Corruptors dying. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I'll have to look at things. It does feel like Zerg has a, an advantage in the late game, for sure. Uh, but I think that's more so the Viper than anything. And the fact that you can't kill a Viper from full HP with a feedback. But I'm still, I'm not even sure how to fix that easily. Uh, okay, Tempest. Because it is Razor's Edge right now on the balance of late game ZVP. Uh, I'm more so, what I'm what I'm worried about is the potential destruction of the enjoyment, like, below pro level. But we'll see. We'll see. It could be totally fine. Could be completely, uh, like, the, the nerf to speed, the nerf to uh, cost might have already been enough to make it so that, like, it's all good. Uh, Tempest. This is one I absolutely 100% agree with. I think it's amazing. Acceleration, deceleration increased from 2.1 to 4.2. They're making Tempest more maneuverable. Good. Radius model scale reduced by 10%. Okay. Sure. I, I That's going to make them more difficult to abduct, I guess. Um, yeah. I think both of these things are good. I think the Tempest is the better unit in many situations in PvZ, but it is really fragile, really difficult to control, and not easy to use. Mothership. This is a big change. It's a huge change. And I agree with a lot of it. The only thing I don't agree with is this, because now the meme is dead. Minus 400, 400 is dead. Long live minus 250, minus 250. Uh... This is a lot of big changes. They are buffing the mothership in a pretty... In my opinion, they're buffing it in a pretty big way. I like it a lot. Uh, supply cost reduced from 8 to 6. I think that's good. Obviously, because you're... Well, uh, we're, there, there's some nerfs that are coming in. Um, they're, they're buffing the, the cost. They're buffing the supply. They're buffing the build speed. They're going to make it a lot easier to replace. That's good. Speed in general being increased. It's lumberingly slow. Also, lateral acceleration, which they explain right here, is how fast the unit changes direction while moving. So it's kind of springiness. I think this is really good. The mothership, right now, it looks... It, it turns like uh, the Titanic, you know? It is not a maneuverable unit. Should it be maneuverable? Maybe not this maneuverable. But I certainly think you should be able to pull it back and then it just moves. I do think that units doing what you tell them to is a generally good thing. Uh, and here comes the compensatory nerfs. Health shields reduced from 350-350 to 250-250. I think that's good. Radius model scale reduced by 20%. Also good. Going to be more difficult to abduct. No longer has energy. That is very interesting. It can no longer be EMP'd. It can no longer be feedbacked. That's big. Recall now has 110 second cooldown. I like that very much. Recall radius reduced from 6.5 to 5. Because they're buffing it significantly, they are still worried about those big mass recalls into an enemy main base being too strong. I think that's good. Time warp now is a 60 second cooldown. Uh, that's... Yeah, that's kind of fine. I think so. 60 second cooldown means that it's like kind of interesting. Recall having a big cooldown. Because double recall used to be like kind of funky. It's going to be less uh, less of a big one-two wombo combo. I do like that, but it, it's it's good because now you can't EMP it. Uh, or feedback it. 
So dealing with that in late game TVP or PVP, I guess is like, now you just kind of have to deal with it. You have to kill it, but you can kill it more easily. Uh, time warp slow reduced from 50% to 33%. Sure, you're, you're giving it a one minute cooldown. That's fine. Time warp radius reduced from four to 3.5, same thing, cool. Time warp cast delay reduced from 1.79 to 0.71. I didn't even know it had a cast delay. So that's, that's good. Uh, because you should be able to just use your spells. They should just happen. Cloak field is no longer passive. This is a huge nerf to meme builds. You can no longer meme with it. It's now an activated ability, which lasts for 10 seconds with a 50 second cooldown. I think that the mothership's cloaking field is so obnoxious. I am so glad that it is not going to just be a permanent thing. I actually think that it is a really silly thing that it was permanent. So I actually think this is an incredibly good quality of life change because it's frustrating to deal with the entire army being cloaked. At the top, top, top level, I don't think this is going to make any difference. They're always going to have overseers. They're always going to have scans. They're usually going to have observers. This is a nerf to it in PvP, but it, it gets a couple of big buffs in PvP too. Like, for example, not being feedbackable. Um, yeah, yeah, I think this is good. I think this is good. Still neat. You're still going to be able to activate the cloaking field. Guardian shield duration increased from 10.71 to 12.86. Yeah, I'm down. Yep. Uh, if you see an army coming... Like it says, you can pre-cast Guardian Shield and it'll be around for the longer duration of the fight. I don't mind buffing sentries a little bit. I think that they've taken a big hit in terms of utility because of the, the Ravager. So I actually kind of like this. I think this is a huge buff. The Oracle, Stasis Sight Ward. Stasis Ward Sight Range increased from four to seven. That is a gigantic buff. You're now gonna be able to get so much more map vision with Stasis Wards. I think this is big enough now that they'll cover most chokes. Like, you can't sneak around them anymore. I really like this. I like this a lot. Uh, this one I initially misunderstood. But I think it's really good. The Immortals Barrier. And, and it's, it, once again, this is more of a bug fix than anything. Uh, Immortals Barrier will also block the first instance of damage, which triggers the barrier. So before, when the Immortals Barrier got triggered... The damage went through and then the barrier got activated. So it has two interactions, one of which is the bigger one and is the one they're addressing here. Uh, first of all, I really like Im Immortals as just their big chonky units instead of Stalkers in the army. I think this is good. I think the Immortal is a great unit. I think it's actually the best design unit in StarCraft 2 in terms of it fills its role very well. But if you build them at the wrong time, they're garbage. Not garbage, but they're not good. They they can lose you a game if you build them incorrectly. If you build them correctly, if you use them correctly, they're great. They're amazing. Uh, but this is really good. Now the EMPs, or pardon me, the Immortals Barrier will block EMP. So EMP, instead of also draining the Immortals Shields and triggering, triggering the barrier, which doesn't last very long and it goes on cooldown, so effectively doing 200 damage, now it's just doing the 100 damage it's supposed to. Uh, this also means that the Disruptor hitting an Immortal will now do less damage on the first attack to the actual armor, uh, which is going to make defending against, I guess, Proxy Robo, where you transition into a Disruptor and your opponent defends with Robo, it'll make those defenses easier in PvP. And then it'll just make Immortals a little bit better in PvP. But they're already really good. Disruptors aren't super common in the meta these days. Uh, okay, and that is the end of this list. It is a lot of things. Uh, obviously, there's a huge amount of changes, but this is very good news for StarCraft II fans. Even if you look at this and you're like, I hate every change, you have to say, you have to admit that this is a good thing. That they are looking at everything. I am personally very happy about this. Uh, whether we get everything going in as is, it'll take testing. And that's why it's a balanced test mod. This is not the balanced patch, but this is intended 
situations. And I'm just really happy about it in general. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Tell me what you like about it. Tell me what you don't like. I have been steadfast. And as always, we will catch you on the flip side.